Hi, I'm Pam Taylor. I know I'm a one-eyed bandit today, and that, that may be for a while. I've explained enough times on video, I'm not going to do it again, as to why I've got my eye covered. But today we're going to do a little bit of beadwork. Partially because I'm a one-eyed bandit, and partially because I've got pony beads. Now, they are uh, the smaller ones from the Dollar Tree. They're not the same size as the ones you get if you're making an actual beaded banner, which is where we will eventually go with this. But uh, that won't be this time. This is just... How do you peyote stitch and uh, flat peyote with pony beads? Because that's what I do. So, without further ado, let's get to the beads. Okay. Let's adjust the camera so you can at least see the whole box. Or whatever of it we can get you to see. Now, I've got one of these monster beading needles. Let's see if we can get it up here to the camera. It's really long. It's a pain. I don't have any short beading needles. I wish I did, but I don't. So, this thing is a needle threader. As a one-eyed bandit, I'm wondering if I can get the needle threader to go through the eye of the needle. Oh, it's not doing it yet. I know. Ah, there we go. Now, when the needle is stuck on the needle threader, you got it. Now. I'm going to set that down like that, and this is El Cheapo beading thread. It's what you get in the beading kits. Now, I'm going to take, because I ain't going to do much, I'm going to take a double arm span of it. That's stretch one arm out as far as it'll go one way, stretch the other arm out as far as it'll go the other way, call that the end. Only it's not. Stick the end through your needle threader, the little end through your needle threader. Ah. I'm a one eyed bandit, and so this is a little difficult. I think. Nope, I dropped the end. Sorry about that, people. Watch me long enough, you'll know more about what not to do than what to do. This wire is so fine, I can barely see it. Give me half a second to put my specs on. My specs. This may help. It may not, because I've only got the one eye right now. But I figured these beads are big enough, I should be able to see what I'm doing. rain and the wind are not helping. I have to film outside and it is raining and a bit windy, but I got it. Now let's get that back to the eye of the needle. I know this is, will work. I tested it the other day. Yeah, oh, there we go. Now we'll put that over here because we don't need that anymore. And we will bring the beading thread to about the, the halfway mark. <coughs> then we're going to take out another uh, about half an arm span. Cut that off. Now, we're going to do this 
even count peyote. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got nine colors. I'm going to take a white bead and I'm going to put it on uh, the needle. I'm going to take it down to the end. This is going to be my stopper bead. Now, I don't usually use a stopper bead, but this is a beginner's tutorial. So we have the stopper bead, and we got to keep it there. So I'm going to go through that bead a couple times. And then I'm going to tie a knot. I know most people say, don't tie knots in beadwork. Well, sorry. I don't listen to that. I don't want my beads to fall apart when I'm working on them or when they're done and hanging somewhere. And where my beaded banners ended up, the last set I made, uh, I'm still trying to repair some of them. And the reason I'm still trying to repair some of them is because they got busted. Not because I didn't tie knots, because I did tie knots. <laughs> but because the people where they ended up are really hard on stuff. And so they got busted. Now, for clarity's sake, so you can see what I'm doing, I am going to actually move these beads off to the side somewhere if I can. You don't need to see the beads, you need to see the needle. So we're going to start with two white. Then we'll go with two light green. Simply because I want to. Color order isn't important. What's important here is that everything that's on the needle in a way that you can see what's going on and I end up with 18 beads on the needle. So I'm really not worried about much of anything except getting all the beads on the needle right now. Although whatever pattern it comes out, that's the pattern we'll be sticking with for the entire beading project. a lot of thread here and uh no luckily I didn't get a knot no where is it there we go my string of beads now peyote stitch you skip a bead go through a bead skip a bead go through a bead so we're going to try to do this laying it down on the paper so you can see. So we skipped the first bead. So we put on a bead that matches the bead we skipped. And we go into the second bead. And we pull our thread through. This is the boring part. Because we got a lot of thread here. 
Now we pick up yellow beads because you always, if you're gonna make stripes, you always pick up a bead, the color of the bead you're skipping. That's how you make the stripe work. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna pull the thread tight again. Now with smaller beads, you could do this in the hand and hold these things really and pull them really, really tight. But these beads are uh, really big compared to Mayokis or something like that. Tohos and Mayokis are tiny compared to these. Can you see what I'm doing? You got three beads now and three beads. They're like stacking little hats. Now we go and get a pink one. Skip this pink one, go through this pink one, and make another hat. And you'll do that all the way across. Now you know I can't edit. <laughs> I can't. So this is going to be slow pokey the whole video. Because you got to go with what I'm capable of doing. And as fast as I can go. So we got a dark green one. And my uh, camera setup does not have pause or any of that. So you're gonna watch the whole thing or you're gonna fast forward through it until I get to the end as I make these. Stick the needle in the container to get the bead I want. It's easier than trying to use my depth perception, which is terrible right now. Okay. Uh. Okay, we're getting there. you accidentally pick up a bead uh, and it accidentally catches on things and oh well so I've been watching people on YouTube and I watch a lot of different people on YouTube. I was telling you last video about uh, PJ and Carrie and how they got married on my birthday. Their channel is Epiphany Craft. I don't think they knew they got married on my birthday. I really don't. If they did, I don't know whether they would have gotten married on my birthday or not. But hey, it was a nice surprise birthday present when I got it. In a way. Now, we've got, as you can see, we've got three rows. We got. So now. We turn the whole thing around, and we work our way back. I think I can, I don't know, trying to keep this in frame is a pain in the neck. But I've got it, I think I've got it pulled tight enough. Yeah, I've got it pulled tight enough. I gotta make sure that it's all going the right direction. So maybe we'll keep it laying down for now. So we go again. Pick up a white bead. And you go through the sticky uppy this time. 
If the bead is sticking up, that's the bead you want to go through. The bead you're skipping is the bead that's down, and that bead is the one you uh, skip, and you skip it by putting a bead of the same color there. That creates for you a new skit sticky uppy. The one you just put out. I'm not getting fancy with this. Although I have gotten really fancy with this kind of stuff in the past. I'll show you some of that work one of these days. I don't have any of it here. Remember, I'm at the camper where I have to film outside and uh, I don't have all my stuff here. Just what I was able to put in Mom's uh, Jeep the first three times we moved stuff over here. Yeah. And what I bought since then when I go to town to buy groceries and I stop at the Dollar Tree, which ain't much. I know people that go into the, seen people with their haul videos, go into the Dollar Tree and spend 60 bucks at the Dollar Tree where every item costs a dollar. And I think, uh, if only I don't think I've ever spent more than $15 at a Dollar Tree in one setting, in one trip. Seen a lady once, I forget her name. I'm sorry, maybe I'll try to look it up. She did a haul video from the Dollar Tree. She spent $300 at the Dollar Tree. Because she had to buy everything. <laughs> but this is the boring part can't pause the recording. I don't have a program on my computer that I know how to use that would merge this recording with another recording if I could figure out that. So you're stuck listening to me yabber and we may take a few tangents runs around the farm on various oddball topics that we don't need to be talking about. Because this is the boring part. All I'm doing is making it wider by adding a bead, skip, going through the uppie, adding a bead, going through the uppie, adding a bead, going through the uppie, all the way down. And I'll keep doing this for a while. <coughs> if you ask me what the heck are you going to make out of this thing when you're done, I don't know. Maybe I'll use it as an embellishment on the cover of a junk journal. Uh, maybe I'll actually make it long enough that I can zip it together into a round because it's Actually, only a little shorter than my cell phone. 
So if I could zip it around and stitch one end shut, it would make at least a partial cell phone cover. Which, truthfully, what you need a cell phone cover for is not to bury your cell phone completely. It's just to make it so that you can't turn it on or dial it in your purse or in your pocket. Can you believe the number of people on this planet that accidentally pocket dialed the police department? I thought that was so funny when I seen it. They pocket dial the police department in the middle of robbing the bank or the liquor store or whatever they're trying to rob. a good cell phone case, they wouldn't do that. So, now, I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing. So we'll just keep going. Because even at this, I think you should be able to figure out what I'm doing eventually. If you see me do it enough times, it's just string the beads. You put a bead, then you put your needle through the sticky uppy bead. Pull the thread through and pull it tight. You're going to skip the next bead with your needle. So you put on a bead that's the same color. That way you get your stripes. You go through that bead. It's a sticky up bead. Now you got these beads. It's time to turn around again. So what I do is I turn the whole thing around. And I flip it upside down. Now I take the bead color that I just skipped. I went through that bead. Now I gotta skip it and go back. So I pick up the same color bead of the bead I just went through. Go through the pokey uppy, which is the last bead I put on, and pull the dang thing tight. Then I pick up the bead color that I'm gonna skip. In this case, it's this limey green. So I pick that up and I go through here. Now the next one is this dark blue. That's what I have to skip is the dark blue. So I pick up a dark blue. I go through the second, the sticky up dark blue that was the last one I put on when I put on a dark blue. And I pull it tight again. Then I got the orange one. I really like these little sort of things. These sort of things I got the beads in. That was the time I spent $15 at the Dollar Tree, because that's where I got them. They've got this size and they've got a smaller size. I like this size for my beads and stuff, because they're good. And they make it easy to store all different kinds of beads. Now they've got the smaller size and I use them for smaller things. I got both sizes. And yeah, I spent $15. I wish they'd get their craft wire back. 
but I've been in our local Dollar Tree now. It's been four and a half months, and I ain't seen the craft wire at all. But hey, I always find something when I go in there. That's the problem with the Dollar Tree. Gotta stop going in there. Don't have any space to store any more craft supplies, I don't think. Mom's gonna freak when I bring everything home from here now. Now, this place doesn't have a good heater, and it's not insulated for the winter time. So, I have to move out. The campground's been sold, so there's a new owner. So the last day I'm allowed to be here, since I'm a seasonal, is actually October 8th. Now, I am going to say, because, hey, I don't want to say when I'm making this video, what day, because by the time I get it uploaded, it could be October. But, uh... I am going to say this. It's 2018. Because, hey... We do have... You know, once you put a YouTube video up, it stays until somebody closes your channel. Because that's the way YouTube is. I know of people that have thousands of videos on that channel. I'm just starting. Maybe one day I'll have that many. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day. And maybe I'll be able to get th other things done. Today it's rainy and cold and we got flood warnings all over the place. But that's okay. I'm up on a hill. And now I am worried a little bit about some of the family because they ain't up on a hill. They live near the creek. But, they'll be okay. It's already been through one flood this summer. They're prepped. Between my sister and my mama, they've got me thinking about starting an Etsy store. Not to sell my stuff, although I could because it's my Etsy store. Mama wants me to. Now, she's up there, in a way. <coughs> She'll soon be a little less than halfway through her uh, 70s in this game of life. And she's thinking about downsizing everything. She's healthier than I am. I don't go anywhere because I don't. Okay. Not on my own. I don't drive. I can drive. I have a 
driver's license even. But I don't drive. I don't drive because my mother will not let me drive her car. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's a fact. I don't have my own car. I'm not allowed to drive my mother's car. So, I don't drive. As a matter of fact, when I move out of here October 8th, I'm going back to my bedroom at my mother's house. I'm level 56 in this game of life, and I live with my mother again. Except in the summertime when I live over here. Which doesn't qualify as me not living with my mother. Because she owns this place too. Now don't think I am taking advantage of my mother. Because, hey, I parent. And she wouldn't have the internet if I didn't pay the internet over there. Which is why the internet over here is so crappy, because I have to use the, the uh, jump box for that. I'm trying to get this arranged a little better so you can see better what I'm doing. But then again, this camera angle is crap. Maybe that's a little better. Now we'll bring this over here. There we go. That's a better camera angle. And we pull this tight so that goes where it belongs. Pick up a white bead. through the white sticky up here. Pull it tight. Pick up the light green bead if I can get my needle untangled here. The biggest problem with this kind of beadwork is beading thread management. You've got to make sure you've got pieces long enough that you're not adding thread every other row. And yet, it's got to be short enough that it doesn't tangle on every dang thing you can think of. Now, with something this large of beads, you can do this on the surface. You can just have it laying here in front of you and feed and then there's less things for it to tangle on. You can't do that with um, smaller beads because with smaller beads you've got to do it in the hand because you can't see what you're doing any other way. If I was gonna make this into an embellishment that I could use on the front of a scrapbooking, uh, a, a junk journal, once I got this done, to whatever length I wanted it, probably another two or three rows is all, then I would. Come back in and along.
along one edge, I would uh, add some dangly bits off of it. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just weave this until I'm out of thread, except what I need to tie off, and call it a panel, and put that panel on my uh, junk journal. Now, take this and flip it end to end, and start over on the other side. Ah, come on, where is the sweet spot again? I'm sorry I keep going out of frame on you. Not intending to. Not intending to. Lucky with these beads, I don't have to have a magnifying glass to see them. With the way my eyes are right now. My eye is getting better. When I first put the patch on, every damn thing hurt my eye. Now it's not so bad. Sit in front of the fan because it's too hot. The, the breeze from the fan hurt my eye. Get too close to the light. The light hurt my eye. It was so all and completely shut. And I see nothing out of it, but hey. But it's getting better. The eye drops the doctor gave me have gotten rid of the pain, but, and about half the swelling so far. But uh, I still have blurry vision. That is a kind of side effect from the eye drops, the eye doctor tells me. That will straighten up after. I don't need the drops no more. But, it could be the end of October before I get out of this eye patch. Because that's what the doctor said. It could take two weeks, or it could take three months. Well, three months would be the end of October, beginning of November. You see, this is like a fabric now. And all it is is a little bit of thread and some beads. Now, if I would have done this in a circle, when I got it to the right length, I could zip it shut and call it a bag. got a lot of these beads because like I said earlier I make beaded banners every once in a while now once I get things the way I need them to be maybe uh, once I get back to my mom's if I can figure out how to set up the camera there without too much hassle. I will uh, get out my beads and show you how to draft a panel for this kind of beads a pattern and show you how to stitch a pattern up. for a uh, beaded banner that you could hang up on your wall like a picture. And uh, 
how to make an actual bag out of these out of this kind. There was I mean, most beaded bags you see out there are made with the little tiny beads. And they've got a lining in them and everything because you have to sew the beads directly to something to support your artwork. In this case, the thread supports everything. Which is why, even though most people say, excuse me, you're not supposed to tie knots in beadwork. I tie knots because this stuff needs to be able to support its own weight plus whatever you're doing with it. Like if you're doing, uh, making a bag, like if you're making a banner, oh well. It only has to support its own weight. But if you're making an actual bag that you're going to carry stuff in, even if it's just your cell phone, these threads have to be able to handle both the weight of the beads, and these beads are not light. They're not really heavy because they're made out of plastic. But when you take the weight of all the beads combined necessary to make a cell phone case, it's got some weight to it. It may only be a couple of ounces, but a hey, thread is thread. It's a little filament, not much. And so it can pull apart from the weight of the beads alone if you don't tie knots. I know there's people that's going to say that's sacrilege. You don't tie knots in big work. Well, there's this person I watch on YouTube. Her name's Manny. Manny's Makings. She ties knots in her beads. Now, she does mostly the little tiny ones. And that's okay, too. I like what she does. She makes some beautiful pieces. I would need a lot more magnification than I've got to be able to do the kind of beadwork she does. So I do this. I might show you some stuff with that because I do the bead weaving too where you have the loom and you weave on the loom. She did a whole thing with several different kinds of looms. Um, for the bead weaving and even some stuff I never thought you could do. I learned a lot. And maybe I'll do some things like that later. This is just a how do you do it kind of thing. Oh, I'll use this piece, like I said. Somewhere you'll see it again. I'm getting ready here to, to shut it off. According to the camera, I've been doing this for 44 minutes. I think you understand what I'm doing. I've done a lot of yakking. We've done. We've even gone down a few rabbit holes. So I'm gonna get off of here. 
I'm going to keep going with this. I'm not sure how big it'll end up. Maybe I'll update you later with another video. Because I can't edit this. It's going to go up the way it is. And eventually I'll do another one, maybe, to show you the end of it. But I'm string's getting short, which is a good thing. I'm almost done. You know that all you do when you end it is to take it back a little ways, tie a knot, take it back through the beads again, and tie another knot. I'll show you that on the next video. Because 44 minutes, 45 minutes, that's a long time. So, I'm going to say goodbye. I love y'all. May God watch over y'all. And I'll see you the next time. I get a chance to record.